Hi everybody, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays from Minneapolis, Minnesota and Melissa Blanchard. This is my Life After 50 blog and I'm giving it the audio touch now. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully you're all having a stress-free holiday season or at least uh, keeping ahead of the game. Not always easy, I know. But remember, there's always things that you can find in life that don't cost anything. Like saying hi or smiling or just acknowledging that another person has something important to say. It helps if you can find the ways to express yourself that doesn't necessarily cost anything. And Lord knows we need to do that more and more with uh, the way prices are going, but I'm just thankful I have what I have and I'm definitely not suffering at all. I don't think most people aren't, but in America I mean, but there are people in America that aren't, don't have work and I pray that every day that we can figure out ways to make sure everybody can find employment of some kind in a way that's uplifting for them that people don't feel it's a hand out but a hand up and I hope everybody feels they have that opportunity this holiday season especially I've got my Christmas music playing in the background this for the little season card, seasonal card here I don't know if I'll do it this a whole season but I do enjoy my uh, decorations I've been building my decorations since I moved into Autumn Woods in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, which I moved here, I think it was around 2011. And every year I've added a little bit to my decorations and now my tree is not is pretty full. I didn't really need any more now for that. At the first year there wasn't many balls on it, but now there's, a, there's it's full. And this year, uh, because of a Nora Roberts challenge, I have some garden plants that I put on my terrace which is behind me and I brought them indoors because I just couldn't see throwing them away or letting the frost get them so the one right behind me here behind me is the geranium and I have a fern but you can't really see him he's or her <laughs> over to the side this side actually, that, that side is the terrace door. And, oh, another thing I'm working on with this audio, uh, video log, blog is my speaking so that it is clear and concise and I don't use crutch words like and and so, which are two of my really great crutch words that I use, which isn't so great when it comes to getting your message across. The main thing is try to be concise with what you want to say and try to do your best to articulate what it is you really want to say not always easy I know but if you can put some effort into it and try to cut down on crutch words or any sort of phrasing that you do just because you're trying to think of something else to say try to drop those if you can it does help for keeping your fo the listener's focus on your message and not on how many times you're using and or so. That's my Toastmasters work I'm doing and I'm really happy I had an opportunity to meet the people in that club. We're meeting again uh, next Thursday which I'm happy for because that's also our payday. And I've just gotten back from Maryland which was very very exciting and fun but I had to put a lot of effort into financing the trip but like I say every moment was worth it and now I'm finding ways to enjoy life without spending money which there are so many and we really just need to remember to share that smile and and help people out when we can for just maybe listening to them when they need somebody to listen it's one of the most important things I think we can do for one another Let's see. Oh, I had a cribbage tournament on Friday. We had high. I my team had a high score, 
24 in one hand, which I was happy for. I'm getting better at counting. I still have trouble with, I think it's seven and, no, let's see, yeah, seven. Well, anyway, there's this combination with eight. Eight and seven, I believe, that makes 15, and I never see that right away. Uh, it never comes to my mind right away, so I, that's the hardest part I have is counting in the end, but it doesn't mean you can't do adding and subtracting. It just means that you're having to think about it much quicker and think about it in terms of scoring points, which 15 is 2, and then 2 and two fifteens is 4, and three fifteens would be six, so you just go up like that. If you get a like a run, two, three, four, five, like that. Three of those is three points. If you get a run of four, it's four points, like that. So it's all about counting, and so and you always want to do your fifteens first. So you do 15, 2, 15, 3, 15, 2, 15, 4, 15, 6, let's say you had three combinations, which you get to count the card that you put on top of the deck. And so they would go like a 10 and a 5, an 8 and a 7, a king and a 5, and if the 5 is on the deck, then you can do the, that count that up there. If it, even if it's in your hand, you have the 5, and you have the 10 on the deck, then you can do the five and the ten there and if you have a king then you do the or a queen or a jack then you could count the five with that as a ten or fifteen and after you do your fifteens then you would go to your other combinations like three of a kind two of a uh, two of a kind counts two that's two points three of a kind is three points like I say the series is one two three four like that would be four points so I think that's right so hopefully I told you right but it's really exciting and it's fun and I think it'd be a great thing for you to, if you have kids, which I don't, but if you did, I think it'd be a great way to help them with math because it really does make you know the simple things about the combinations that you make in, in uh, cards, which isn't going to be, you know, 20, 30, 40 so much, although we do go up to 32. So... You, you get them counting and you get them adding. So I think it would be a fun game for kids to play with adults. But remember, it's got to be fun. If it's not fun, I, at least for me, it's not worth playing. I like to do things, I like to have a fun atmosphere and not have a, a cutthroat type thing or a lot of pressure that if you don't play well that you're somehow not not good enough to play. We all need to be tolerant of one another, I believe. And I believe playing games is a good way for us to learn what it means not to be able to win every time. And understanding that losing has got a lesson in it, too. We all need to learn as much as we can about that because really life is going to have a lot of times when we don't win necessarily. But it's, sometimes it's all about the living that makes is what makes that really good feeling about you as a person have succeeded even when things go wrong which we hope don't have doesn't happen very often so oh there's my crutch word I'm hopeful that everybody's having a really great Saturday and I hope that you keep in mind that there are things that you can do that don't cost anything like art drawing sketching. I do cards that I draw so you just you buy a little bit I mean if you unless you have some paper laying around I this here is a little firmer stock so that you can draw on it and then you can seal it like I use like a puzzle glue after because this is charcoal I don't know how well you can see on the camera but this this here would smear if you didn't try to seal it with something. Uh, decoupage is like when I originally used that, my grandma used to love to make boards where you would find your really uh, pretty Christmas cards that you would get from people. And then you could apply, you could cut the picture out and 
put that on a board after you sanded it, whatever, and then you would put decoupage over it and then that would seal it and you could put it on, on your wall as a remembrance of the holiday or whatever the card was in remembrance of. That's something that we used to do a lot together, which didn't cost too much, just the decoupage and then wherever you were able to find um, scrap lumber. My grandpa used to be able to find scrap lumber and then he we would use sandpaper to sand it down. And you, well, actually, my great great grandpa made a whole cupboard out of, uh, like, I mean, a, what do you call that? Uh, it's a thing that you put clothes in. You know what I mean? But it was a, you would take that, oh, what is that called? Chest of drawers, we used to call it. Uh, you would put your clothes in it anyway, like your underwear and your, and your, your socks and your, you know, hankies if you had those. And anyway, he made that all out of uh, crates that were basically back in his day. A lot they didn't have cardboard. They put everything in crates, so it was like thin cut pieces of wood. And when he put it together, uh, we put uh, little stickers. We did this later, but he just he just put it together. And it was this perfect little cupboard that you could, uh, or uh, chest of drawers. He also made a cupboard, a little little uh, hutch-like thing. And I don't know if that was my dad and grandpa made that, or if my great-grandpa and my dad made it, or if my great-grandpa made it for my dad. I'm not sure. But it was in my dad's bedroom when he was a kid in the 40s. So it, it was been around a long time, and he had actually cut holes into it and put a speaker in it. So he had a radio set, and then it had a door that would flip up, and the speaker would play out this way. And then he had things he could put, a little shelf area where he could put his books and that kind of thing. So there's a lot of things you can make out of not much if you use a little imagination. And like I say, a smile doesn't cost anything. Listening to somebody just for a few minutes out of your day when they need to talk about something uh, and really listening, you know, let them have the opportunity to, to get what they want to say out. It all goes together to help us be more, feel like we're connected with others. And I think we are. I mean, I really do. I believe we are connected if we take the time to see other people and try to feel somewhat that we have some understanding that everybody needs an ear every once in a while. So I hope you take the time to listen to someone that needs it this holiday season and all year round and find what doesn't cost too much in life and do all you can to celebrate that. Take care now, and I hope I will keep on video blogging. We'll see how this goes. But I'm really hopeful that everybody has a really, really good Saturday. Maybe you'll be able to watch Hallmark Channel if you've got it on your TV. It's going to be a really good show at 7. It's uh, Debbie McComer's uh, Mrs. Miracle, a new movie installment, so I'm really excited to watch that. And don't forget, library has books, and the books don't cost anything as long as you remember. Take care of them and bring them back on time. And it's a free service that the library provides. It's really wonderful in our country that we have that. So I hope everybody takes advantage of reading this holiday. If, you know, whatever books you're interested in, it's not bad. It's never, never, never apologize for your what you love to read. It's what you want to read, and it's your time. So use it wisely. Okay, have a great Saturday, everybody. Bye-bye. Hmm.